Hi guys, um, Miss McCurry here. Uh, how was your Sunday? Mine was good. I went on a bike ride. I took a nap. And what else did I do? Oh, I was working on my knitting. I'm pretty bad at it, but here we are. Finding new things to do. Did you do anything new or fun today? Um, I'm gonna get back to reading. We're on chapter four of Bad Boy. Just a quick recap from chapter three. Remember that um, Walter, main character, is in the third grade and he did not do well in school even though he loved to read. Um, and he got in a lot of trouble when he got in trouble at school. So his mom um, punished him at home when he got in trouble because he didn't behave at school, which he did frequently. So that's where we are. He's in fourth grade. Arithmetic Summer. My sister Viola was married to a soldier, Frank Law, in 1944 and had a baby, Frank Stephen Law, in April 1945. When I brought home my report card at the end of the third grade with all the bad marks circled in red, Mama was very upset. Frank, a graduate from a black college and a commercial artist, volunteered to help me with arithmetic, in which I had received my lowest mark. As I remember it, my arithmetic was as good as anyone else's in the class, if not better, but the teacher had hated me and reminded me of that when she filled out my report card. At first, I was threatened with not being allowed to go to Bible school, which I loved, but eventually an arrangement was worked out. I would come directly home from Bible school and spend two hours working on math problems with Frank. Frank's idea of arithmetic was rote learning. Every day I was given 100 oral problems to solve. One miss meant I would have to do another 100. If he gave me a problem such as 9 times 7, I would, I would have to say 63 at once. Uh, 63 was considered a wrong answer. So was 63. Uh, I learned to hate arithmetic. Can you tell from the context clues what arithmetic means? Oops, excuse me. <coughs> Not good. Okay. With Viola married to Jerry Graham, I found myself sleeping on the couch in the living room. From where I lay, I could look out the window across Morningside Avenue all the way to red light on top of Riverside Church. For some reason, that red light was always a source of comfort for me, and many nights I fell asleep looking at it. When school started in September, I was looking forward to it. Mama warned me to be on my best behavior this year, and I fully intended to do just that. I wanted to be good and do God's will, as I was being taught in church. I spent a lot of time in church, and it meant a lot to me. The pastor, Reverend James H. Robinson, was nice but strict. If he caught you throwing candy wrappers on the sidewalk, he would give you a whack with his open hand on the bottom, hard enough to lift you off the ground. Or if you played Chinese handball against the wall during a funeral, he would send Mrs. Bellinger, one of the big-bosomed matrons, out to yell at you. No one, quite, no one could yell quite like Mrs. Bellinger. Quick pause. Look at what my dog does when she gets... Um, well, maybe I can't show. Oh. <laughs> Can you see? She whines. She gets stuck into a room. Okay. School started in September, and I was going back to PS 125 on LaSalle Street in Harlem. I met Eric Leonhardt in the fourth grade. He was blonde and blue-eyed and lived over on a bakery, over a bakery on Amsterdam Avenue in Morningside, Morningside Heights. Eric's parents owned the bakery and worked in it as well. Mom had come to a school for some kind of parents' meeting and sat next to his mother. His mother was German and spoke with an accent. She sat next to my mama and the two women talked and Eric and I talked a little. I don't know how much German mama spoke. I think she understood more than she could speak. During the first week of the fourth grade, Mrs. Parker, our teacher, made the two tallest boys, Eric and me, the cookie monitors. It was our job to take the cookie orders and then go down to the first floor to get the cookies and milk from the teacher who had charge of them for the day. The Sunshine Bakery was in the neighborhood and the cookies would still be warm and delicious. Sometimes Eric and I would open the cookies with cream in them and lick off the, the part with the cream. Mrs. Parker told me that she had heard all about me and that if I did one thing wrong, she would make me sorry. She had white hair and a sharp nose and piercing gray eyes. I tried very hard to be good that year. On my first report card, I got a C plus in overall conduct. Remember that means behavior and a few needs improvement marks. But I also had more satisfactories than ever before. Then one fight shortly after Easter vacation, 
spoil the whole year. Maurice Fleetwood, or Bunny as we used to call him, was afraid of everything. We got into an argument, I pushed him in the closet, and he began to cry and sniffle. A little snot bubble came out of his nose, and every time he took a deep breath, a bubble went into his nose, and every time he breathed out, it formed a bubble. Walter's going to give you a bloody nose, a girl said. Bunny sniffed. The snot bubble grew large, and he swung at me. The punch was more out of fear than bravado, and it knocked me down. Now, the gathering crowd of kids started yelling, telling Bunny to run before I killed him. Bunny couldn't get his legs going, and in a panic, I sw and swung at me again. This time I saw stars as I went flying backward. As I tried to get my eyes open, a girl pushed Bunny toward the door, and he went half stumbling, half running away. Mrs. Parker came in and called the class to order, asked what had happened. Naturally, she blamed me and told me that I had to bring my mother to school the next morning. Mrs. Parker couldn't leave well enough alone and kept telling the class what a bully I was. My left eye was swollen almost shut from where Bunny had hit me, and my stomach was cramping. As bad as I felt, I didn't need extra burden of having the class turn and look at me while she made nasty remarks. I picked up my book and started looking at it. Put that book down, she shouted. I didn't put it down, I threw it. I meant to throw it into the corner to show as mad how mad I was. She saw me getting ready to throw the book and jumped to one side. The book hit her on the shoulder and she screamed. Uh-oh. I want your mother here this afternoon. And when your mother gets here, I'll have a police officer here to take you straight to reform school. She screamed. Put your head down at the desk at once. Roxy, off. I don't want to see your face. I put my head down on the desk and tried hard not to cry. All year, I hadn't been in one fight in school and in only one or two outside of the school. Now I was going to reform school. When school let out for lunch, I went home slowly. My stomach was really cramping up. And the, by the time I got to the fourth floor, I was really miserable. What's the matter with you, boy? Mama used the tone that uh, meant that she was serious. Nothing, I said. I told her I wasn't hungry and I lay down on the couch. Mama asked me if I was in any trouble at school. I had to tell her the truth. No. She took me into the living room, put the radio on, and sat with me while I lay across the couch. Then I threw up. She helped me clean up, felt my forehead, and said that I had to go to the hospital. Okay, that was different. We went to the hospital where a young doctor looked me over and asked me what was wrong. When I told him my stomach hurt, he asked me what I had eaten the day before. The day before had been the last day of Easter vacation, so I tried to eat up most of the candy that was left over. He laughed and told my mother I needed a laxative and I'd be fine. Then a woman doctor who acted like his boss came in to check me. I didn't say anything as... Oops, I just lost my spot. Uh... She didn't say anything as he told her what he thought was wrong. She reached under the sheet and pushed the lower right of my right part of my abdomen. I screamed and she turned to a nurse and told her that to schedule an emergency operation. An hour later, I was having my appendix removed. When I got out of the hospital the next week, I got two books as presents, The Bobsy Twins at Spruce Lake and Mystery Rides at the Rails. By the time I got home from the hospital, Mama was working again at the button factory she had worked in before. I was supposed to stay home and in bed. I could listen to the big radio, but I wasn't allowed to do anything strenuous, including going outside to play, until I had been cleared by the doctor. But I always had to do something. I had a very hard time sitting still and doing nothing. I would fill any space with some kind of physical activity. When I took my bicycle out and down the street, down the three flights of stairs to the street, I decided it would be just for a spin around the block. I'd been riding my bike for about an hour when I saw my father coming down the street. I rode across Morningside Avenue and struggled with the bike up the stairs as fast as I could. My belly hurt terribly from the effort, but I didn't want my dad to know I had disobeyed him and gone outside. I got the bike into the house and barely made it to my bed before collapsing. Somehow I got my sneakers, socks, and other clothes off under the covers. When dad came into the room, I pretended to be asleep and he left. About an hour or so later, mama came home and she looked at me and asked if I wanted some ice cream that she had bought me. I said no, and she felt my forehead and noticed that it was damp. You feeling all right, boy, dad asked when he came into the living room. Yes, was my answer, and he asked me why I was curled up. I pulled back the cover and saw the blood oozing from my bandaged stomach. He picked me up and rushed me to the emergency ward. The incision had opened, either when I was riding the bike or when I was getting it back upstairs. What happened? A doctor asked. I fell. There might be some internal bleeding, was the diagnosis, and I spent another night at the hospital. Home again, and Mama quit her job to take care of me. I didn't attend any more classes that year. In early June, my sister Jerry took me to school, 
but after a hurried conference between Mrs. Parker and Mrs. Flynn, I was promoted to the fifth grade and moved to a new school. Big um, situation here. Um, just a few questions. One, what happened in this part of the chapter that tells you um, about Walter's character? How can you, um, there was an event in this chapter that tells you about Walter and then from there, how would you describe Walter in two or three words? What kind of boy is he? We know that he's in um, going into the fifth grade, but think about some character traits that describe him and uh, why you would say that. Stay tuned and keep listening. Um, we'll be on to chapter five in the next video. Much love.